Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Meghnath. In this module, we will see how do we initialize an array. In the previous module, we have read the values from the user. We have read first value into array of zero, second value into data of one, data of two, data of three. We are reading it from the user. But in this module, we will learn how can we initialize it when we declare it. And also we will see how we can use a for each loop to print the values of the array. And let's get started. Now. I just open Eclipse IDE. Now, what we will do is, let me see, let's see now, I'll write here int of data is equal to new int of four. Now, when I declare like this, I can actually store four values in this array, starting from zero, zero, one, two, three, that we have already seen this in the previous lesson. Now, what if I want to initialize the array here? So let's take in numbers, right? Simple integers. I will write int a is equal to five. Int a I can declare. So this is called declaration. Now, if I want to initialize with my own value, I can write int a is equal to 10. Now, this is called declaring and initializing. Here also we are declaring and initializing, but the default values are zeros. Now, what if I want to initialize with uh, my own values in this array? So now we will learn how do we initialize with user-defined values when you declare an array. So let's say this now. Now, all I have to do is int of data is equal to new int of, and then put flower brackets, and write 5, 10, 45, and 90. Now, this is how you can initialize an array in the same line. Remember, when you are initializing with some values, I'm initializing four values. When you are initializing with some values, you should not mention the size here. Because you're indirectly telling the size here, so you should not put the size here. If I put the size here again, it'll give an error. So, so size is mandatory, but in this case, you don't have to put the size because you're already telling the size by this. So if someone sees this, they'll understand that, okay, size of the array is four. And if I put here, let's take uh, 99. Now the size of the array is five. So in this case, I am not reading the values from the user. I'm initializing it when we declare itself. That's why this is called initializing an array with the, with the user defined values. And remember, array size is mandatory, either directly or indirectly. If you are not initializing here, let's take you're not initializing here. You must, you must let me, uh, okay, this is a zero value, zero array size. Now I'm not initializing it. Now, when I'm not initializing with some values, I must declare the size. I repeat, when I'm not initializing the array size, I must declare the values. Uh, I must tell the size here. So now I'm telling the size of the array. And if I'm initializing it, since anyway I'm indirectly telling the size, you don't have to put here. And you just initialize it here. So 45, 55, 60, 66, and 77. So now if someone asks you, what is the size of this array? The size of this array is four. And what is the last index of the array? So the last index is three. What is the first index of the array? The first index is zero. Now, if I want to print these values, I can print using for loop. Now let's take, I want to print, someone asked me, can you print the values of arrays? Now I can print the values. How do we print using for loop? I can print it for, I can declare integer here itself, int i is equal to zero, or i less than, i less than four, i plus plus, I want to print the values, SYS for control space, data of i. Now first time it'll print data of zero, and again it'll go here, data of one, data of two, data of three. So I'm printing it. So let's run the code now. Click OK. Now you can see here, I'm printing the values of the array using a for loop. Now we have something called for each loop in, in Java. So how do you write here is for int d colon data for each element d in data sys for d now here we are using index by using the index we are printing data of zero data of one data of two data of three like that now here when you write like this for integer d colon data that means it will directly take the first value so see here now if it is now what are the values we have we have 45 and we have 55 and we have 66 and we have 77. Now, when you write a for loop, you are working with the index 0, 1, 2, 3. So what you're doing here, first you are taking data of zero and you're printing here data of zero 
and then you are taking data of one, data of two, data of three. Now when you are you when you write like this for each value d in data, for each value d in data, it will directly take this value. Now first time it will take for each value d in data, d colon data, it will first take 45 and it will print 45 here, and then it will take it will take 55, it will take 66, it will take 77. So automatically it will take each element from this array. It will take first element, second element, third element, and fourth element. It will stop automatically when it reaches the last element. So that's the reason why if you see some people who are straight from the college, they will be normally using for loop to print the values. If you see more like two years experienced guy, will always prefer to write a for each loop because you don't have to worry. So if you write a for loop, right? In future, if I, let's take, I'm adding here 90. So this loop will still iterate up to three only. So, and it'll print only up to 77. But if you write a for each loop, because I'm not mentioning size anywhere, it'll take element by element, first element, second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element, and it'll stop when it reaches the last element. So this is always good. The reason why for each is always good is because it will take element by element and it'll stop when it reaches the last element automatically. It will not go with the index. So from now, you always prefer writing this for loop for integer d colon data. You have to write system dot out dot println. Now in case if the if the array is float value, so you have to write for for float d colon anything you can write here, not necessarily d. You can write z also. If you have to write here z. So this is just a variable that will hold the current value from the array. Now let's see once again. Now. Very quickly, I'll do it. Now, first, how do we initialize it? Int of data or something like scores is equal to new scores. And now I'm initializing it so I don't have to put the size here because I'm, I don't have to put the size, I'm initializing it. Now 66 or 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now I initialized it. How many values I initialized? I initialized to, now why I'm seeing the error here? Let me move the mouse on this. It's course. The reason for getting this error is I have written here. Uh, <laughs> I have written here scores. It has to be int, right? So int of scores equal to new int, and uh, because we are in, we are reading integer. And now what I'll do here, I have to print the values. So what I have to do here, I'll be writing a for each loop, for int yes colon scores, or you can write anything for each value z in scores. And all I have to do is I just need to write SYSO Z. So what happens in this case, the Z first, it'll take 60, it'll print here. It'll go to the next value, 70 it'll print here, 80 it'll print here, 90 it'll print here, and 100 it'll print here and it'll stop. So you don't care about the index. That's why this is called for each loop in Java. For each loop in Java is used to print the values, is used to loop through the values in array. Let's run this code. Now you can see it's printing the values, right? Now let's check, I want to find some of the numbers using for each loop. So what I can do here, I'll declare one value here, int sum is equal to zero. And I'll write here, simply I'll write here, sum is equal to sum plus z. Now in that case, since z represents each value directly, so sum is zero, zero plus 60, we'll store here, 60 plus 70, 130 plus 80, 210 plus 90, like that, so it'll print 400 or approximately. So let's run the code and let's see whether it'll print. Now I'll just need to print the sum, SYSO control space, sum is equal to plus sum. Let's run the code. Now you'll see it's printing 400. So I hope all of you are clear with how to write a for loop to print the values and how to write a for each loop, which will take automatically element by element in the array and find sum and print it, right? So that's all for now. Please keep practicing and see if you can get the output and see, try to write the code without seeing uh, the video once. First you watch the video once and then close the video and try to write the code without seeing the video. That way you learn programming very quickly. Okay, so that's all for now. Thank you and see you in the next module.